חודש טוב, חודש אדר, מי שנכנס אדר מרבים בשמחה, how appropriate to complete now the whole concept of how do you open your mazal. Mazal, mazal, everybody is looking for mazal. I want good luck, there's an expression. We say he has more mazal than sechel, he has more mazal, more luck than he has brains. He has the capacity to understand and do. So how do we establish mazal? We don't establish anything. Mazal comes from Hashem. The only thing we have to do is to create a vessel. To create the recipient, to empty ourselves in order to create that vacuum, to permit that vacuum effect to draw down the mazal. We spoke about makom last time, space. Time. What is time? We say in the Pasuk that before, you open your hand and grant everybody according to the will. We say, everybody's eyes are turned to you. They turn to you. And you Hashem you give them their food be'ito in his time, not in your time, the way we consider it, but rather in Hashem's time, which is above all times. So basically we have to connect to Zman, we have to connect to time. What is ito? We say in our prayer, I am a prayer to you Hashem, et ratzon, in the time which is a time of willingness of favor there is a certain time of favor Hashem gives us the opportunity to actually connect to the time to the time of Hashem when you connect to the time of Hashem at that moment everything is open so exactly what is our job? How do we connect to this time of Hashem in order to let the mazal, as we explained, mazal comes from the word nozelim min levanon, which means that there is a flow from Lebanon, lev nun, the heart of nun, which we'll explain what that is. And when there's that flow, suddenly you find yourself in a situation where you're full of mazal. But before we get there, we need to introduce a little this concept of Mishenichnas Adar Marbim Besimha. You come into Adar, we have to increase in joy. Adar. There we go. The month of Adar is three letters, important letters. The letter Aleph the letter Dalet and the letter Resh. Three, three, three very interesting letters. Aleph, Dalet, Resh. We know in the Torah, we say every day, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Dalet. Big Dalet. Not to be mixed with Lo Tishtachave Le'el Aher. You should not bow to another God. Round. So we have two entities which look very much the same and actually mean exactly the same thing. The word Dalet in Hebrew means poverty and the word resh in Hebrew means poverty. The difference is this is holy poverty, kadosh, right? And this is the opposite, poverty which is not holy. What are you talking about? To understand this, let's try to look around the world. What happened? Around the world you have different planets in the man, in the man himself, right? You have the cells, you have cells, 
and the cells are round. Everything goes round. The person that thought the world was flat just died a few days ago with his experiments. So the world is round. It might not go round, but it is round. Everything is round in the world. In the beginning, in Bereshit, it says, Bereshit bara Elohim, six days of creation, the end, Yom HaShishi, Vachul HaShamayim Ve'aretz, on the sixth day God finished creating the heavens and the earth. And this is everything that he did, Asher bara Elohim, which God created, La Asot, in order to do. La Asot. This word, La Asot, Many, many commentaries ask a question. What do you mean you created to do? To do what? The Midrash Rabbah explains that the word to do really means letaken, to repair. God created the world. He put us in the world in order to repair the world. We are here to repair the world. How do you repair a world that is round, but is not going round? David HaMelech says in his Tehilim, I think it's Tehilim Vav, it says, Reshaim Saviv Yithalechun. The Reshaim, they go in circles. Why circles? Because En Hadash Tachat Hashemesh, there's nothing new under the sun. It's always the same cycle over and over again. Today it's an iPhone 11. Yesterday it was a, a, a whatever, something else. Every time there's something new. But it's all the same thing. So, we have to fix the world. And it says, Lo nitnu a mitzvot ella letzarev ba'emet abriyot. The purpose why mitzvot were given to us was in order to fix us. That we should actually become more refined people and become that channel for godliness. In order to become a channel, you cannot be a circle. You need to open the circle and let the light in. So, the mitzvot are square. The mikveh is square. Tefillin are square. Sukkah is square. Talit is square. You have to be square. So, we see the same thing in our letters. The letter Dalet, which represents Hashem, is square. The letter Resh, which represents the other gods, the other reality, is round. We need to be able to break that cycle, bring a little Yud over here. There's a little Yud right here. Because the Dalet, if you notice, is not like this, like the Resh, it has a little Yud over there. And then it's called the Dalet, it's square. Why? Because you need the Yud of Hashem in order to be able to make Hashem reside in the world. You can't just go with the flow of things. When things are easy and they're just flowing, you are living in the world of Klippa. Klippa in Hebrew is a very interesting word. We know it's a word from Kabbalah, right? The word Klippa, Kuf, Lamed. Yud, Pe, and He. Kuf and Lamed, Kal, it's easy. Yud, Pe, He, Yafe. If it's beautiful and it's easy, you know it's not of the realm of Kedusha, of holiness. Round is easy. It's always the same circle. Square, already, when you get married, you break a plate because you have to break the cycle. You have to be able to go into a new dimension. You have to be able to have a start. You have to have a beginning to have an end. You, you know where you're going. You need to fix things. Now, what happened at the beginning of creation? The beginning of creation, Adam and Hava, Adam is told, do not eat from the tree of knowledge, the tree of experience of good and bad. So, he says his wife, don't touch the tree, don't get away from the tree, and so on. The snake starts a conversation and says, you know, if you're going to eat from the tree, you're going to become just like God. You could be God. So, you know, it's a very interesting, exciting idea to become godly. 
So, or God like. So what happened? She eats from the tree. She realizes she's human. And then her husband eats from the tree. What happens with her? God turns to her and says, why did you do it? Of course, who needs to take responsibility? She says, Hanahash hi shi ani. Which means, the snake has seduced me. I can take responsibility. The snake seduced me. Right? The TV station. It was my cell phone. It was my uh, neighbor. It was whatever. They seduced me. What seduced you? What do you mean? Yeah, I got seduced because you see, he, she, ani, I'm sorry, he, she, ani forms two words. The word hayesh is there and the word ayin is there not. Hayesh Hashem bekirbenu, the verse says, im ayin. Is God amongst us? Or is he just in the heavens? Or is he not? I had a doubt exactly in the reality. Is it me? Is it him? Is it me? Is it him? Is it me? Is it him? I ate. Adam Arishon eats from the tree of knowledge and the same thing happens to him. And now he's going to be cursed. How is he going to be cursed? He's going to be cursed with his paranasa. We know, you hit somebody's pocket. Oh, where is Hashem? Oh, Rabbi? I just lost a million dollars. Where were you when you made them? Anyways, so what happened? His punishment is Kotz vidardar tatzmiach lach. Kotz and dardar tatzmiach lach. You're going to see thorns and thistles. That's what's going to grow. What ha what's happening here? What's the punishment? What's the sin? The Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer says, and you see this at the entrance of the, the, the resting place of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Ha Adam Hu Olam Gadol. Man, I'm sorry, Ha Olam Hu Adam Gadol. The universe is a big man. Ha Adam Hu Olam Katan. Man is a small universe. We say in Yiddish, Tzishpikel Zach. The world is a reflection of where you're holding. I have a doubt in Hashem. Hayesh Hashem im ayin. Is God amongst us or not? In other words, is it the Dalet that rules the world of Echad? Or is it just Mother Nature? Everything goes around and you know it's a cycle of life. No problem. That's your doubt? No problem. That's what you're going to sow. That's what you're going to harvest. And therefore you will have Dar, 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 thistles. What's dar, dar? Dalet, resh, dalet, resh. These doubts that you have are going to translate themselves in the work and the toil you're going to have to take away in your parnasa. And actually, if you look at the letter resh, which has a numerical value of 200, and you take away the dalet, which is the unity of Hashem, which is minus 4, we have 196, which is the numerical value for the word kotz, which is torns. Which means that the moment that you have doubts, these doubts are going to translate themselves in everything. And therefore, on Mishle it says, Me'or the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. It's the Mitsudat that says on this pasuk, that en simha ke'atarat asfikot. The greatest joy there is, simha, <coughs> is when you have a lack of doubt. When you have no doubts, you have certitude. You know, it's only Hashem. And you are clear in your path. There's no greater joy than that. So what do we want to do? 
We want to be able to establish the dominion of Hashem in this world in a way that Hashem is the true reality. Interestingly enough, Rosh Chodesh, this week's parasha, is Truma. This week's parasha says, Ve'asuli Migdash, make for me a temple, a sanctuary, which is square, by the way, mm -hmm. and I will dwell in them. What's them? Them is every single one of us. We are a Mishkan, a house for Hashem. Okay, so why did God create the world? There are three explanations why God created the world. One explanation is, it says in the Zohar, Begin de ishtemodeon le, legalot shlemut kochotav veyecholotav in order that God should be known and God's light and power should be it should be uh, revealed. That's one explanation. Another explanation is, a higher level, God is good. The nature of good is to do good, but you can't do good with yourself, you have to do good with someone else. So he creates another entity. Right? How did God create another entity and do what's called in Kabbalah Chalal Umakom Panui, an empty space? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev gives a beautiful explanation. Is that it's just like a mother having a womb and inside the womb you have an independent life which is completely dependent on the mother. So we live an independent life, an empty space within Hashem's space to go back to space. Anyways, let's not be a space cadet. So, what happens? What happens is that we need to draw down Hashem's presence in this world. God created the world because He wants to do good. God created the world because He wants to reveal Himself. And then you have the highest of all explanations why God created the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to have down here a dira. He wanted to have a house. He wanted to have a home. It was simply a desire. There's no reason. There's no explanation. You can't, you can't understand it. It's not because he wants to reveal himself. It's not because he wants to do good. It's just a desire. Where does a desire come from? It comes from the essence. So there's basically, according to these three explanations, we understand that there are three ways that we humans see our existence in this world. We can look at our existence in this world that really we are here to look for the greatness of Hashem. We want to experience a spiritual experience, how Hashem is going to be revealed and, and have a thrill of excitement. Or we want to connect to the fact that Hashem is good and see the goodness of Hashem everywhere. But that's still a reasoning. Then there is the ultimate in connecting to God. It's called HaKadosh Baruch Hu just desired to have a home down here in the physical world. He didn't want you to go out after your desires. He didn't want you to go out after some spiritual quest. He wants you to live in this world, yes. The physical world with the water, with the problems, with the carpools, with the relationships, with the issues, with the inner struggles, everything. You, that's where he wants you. He wants you in this physical world. This is his house, nothing else. Don't escape that reality. It depends. You want to embrace the external of Hashem? Stick to the spiritual realm. Hashem has angels, He has you too. You want to stick to the essence? Just...
<laughs> Just do it. The simple action of doing, putting on this feeling, yes, the skin of an animal, the leather, the parchment, yes, making that kiddush on that cup when I don't understand, yes, taking that coin and giving it to tzedakah, I don't understand, I didn't feel anything. That is the action that is done and that grasps the essence and connects you to the essence of God. And at the moment that you have the essence, you have everything with it. You have the revelation of Hashem, you have everything that comes with that. Many times we want to escape reality. The reality we want to escape to that's not where the true essence of Hashem is. Many times in marriage we want to escape reality. We are looking for love. I want to feel romantic. I want to have butterflies in my stomach. Take Pepto-Bismol if you have butterflies in your stomach. I love you, honey. Can you take out the garbage? Let's not push it. <laughs> Do you understand? It's a question of the simple actions in the pshitut, in the simplest actions that have no feelings. You are able to actually reveal the essence of Hashem. Ah, but I don't feel. Who asked you to feel? There are people that finish the Talmud, that don't put on the tefillin in, their, in the morning. You have people that do it bodedut, that speak to God every day for half an hour, didn't pray the prayer that they've been asked God to do. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about doing it. Because at the moment that you do it, you've just open a true channel. Now, we're really attached. I remember one day the chief rabbi of France, Rav Sitruk, Shalom, said that when he met his rabbi the first time, Rav Nauri, he went to a first Torah class. The rabbi didn't ask who he was. He went to a second Torah class, another one, a few more Torah classes. And then at the end of the fifth class, Rabbi Nauri says, Shalom Aleichem. Now that we know each other, what's your name? There's no small talk. There's an essential connection that's able to bond the essence together. What is our problem? The problem is we live in a world of doubt. The world is putting doubts in our mind all the time, all the time. This, you have to do this, you have to do that, this will make you happy, and, and so on and so forth. That's nonsense. We all know that's nonsense. Where are you living? If you're living in this world and you're ready to toil and do what Hashem wants, that's what's going to bring you to the essential connection. Rabbi Lipsker of the Shul Abel Harbor, some 23 years ago, said a story. He said that there was this man that didn't understand the statement of the Talmud. He came to a class and he didn't understand. The Talmud says that you have to accept the yoke of Torah just like an ox accepts its yoke and a donkey accepts its load. So he said, did you ever see an ox with a load? It's like this with its shoulders going out of its skin. I'm not comfortable. Rabbi, what are you talking about? So the Rabbi said, do you remember when I asked you to put on tefillin? I asked you to put on tefillin for three months without asking any questions. You did it. You came back after three months and you said, Rabbi, I don't feel anything. I want to stop this. What did I tell you? As a good Chabad rabbi, another three months, let's get an extension. You do it for the taxes, you could do it for the tefillin too. Three months. <laughs> after three months, you were so excited about tefillin, you put him in every day. 
You were so ignorant at the time that in order not to wake up your wife in the morning, you used to put him in the bathroom. And one day you even came to me telling me, the rabbi said, Rabbi, it's Sunday. I just heard that you're not allowed to put him on Shabbat. So today I put him on twice. True story. If you would have started with your feeling, with your excitement, you would be nowhere today. It's because you started doing things because God said so, not because I feel it. Naase venishma. The naase, the action, is what makes you a vessel to be able to understand, to integrate, to comprehend, to become one with the <coughs> essence. And then you truly understand. But what happened when we were at the mountain and suddenly we didn't understand why Moshe Rabbeinu was not coming. We decided to go in another direction. So suddenly we put the Nishma before the Nas and we messed up. We put the understanding before the action. So, so it's interesting because this month, which is the month of Adar, we remember our enemy, what's his name? Amalek. Amalek! Amalek has a numerical value of the word safek, which is a doubt. As soon as you're going to have a doubt, you know that Amalek is there. But what is Amalek? What is the purpose of Amalek? To understand this, we have to understand how the Talmud of Megillah starts. In Megillah, the Megillah we read on Purim, the name of God is not mentioned once. So if you want to have doubts, you can have as many doubts as you want. You can even think that Mother Nature arranged things, if you want to call God Mother Nature. Events happen and suddenly you see Megillah, the reve revelation of Esther, of what's hidden. The Torah says, the Gemara, the Talmud says, Haman mina Torah minayin. Haman is the descendants of Amalek. Haman mina Torah minayin. How do I know Haman? You would think that right away, where does it say Haman in Torah? Haman, the manna. No. It actually refers, and it says, Hamin Haetz. Is it from the tree that I told you not to eat from? You ate? Ah, you have a doubt. Oh, that's Haman. Okay, Esther. Esther mina Torah mina. And where is Esther in the Torah? So it says, Vanochi Aster Astir et Panai. I will hide and conceal my face. The Baal Shem Tov says, what does it mean I will hide and conceal my face? You already said hide. What do you say, conceal again? So he says, there's a child that's playing hide and go seek with his daddy. He says, daddy, daddy, where are you? What happens? There's a certain excitement. Here you can really call the real butterflies. The daddy is inside the closet and he's hearing the voice, daddy, I can't find you. And he's excited. Because the child is looking for the hidden father. But sometimes there's such a bitter, low situation. The fact that the father is concealed, that is concealed from the child itself. He doesn't even look for his father. That's Esther. In a time of darkness when you're not even looking and seeking to get out of something as you don't understand there's something bigger. And then you have Mordechai. Mordechai Parashat Kitisa, it says over there in the Onkelos translation, Maradachia, the good incense, Mordechai, the spirit, the incense of Gan Eden, the one that has clarity in this whole situation and is able to stand strong, Lo Yichra Velo Ishtahave. Mordechai does not bow to anything that has to do with the world. 
He believes, Mordechai HaYehudi, I recognize and surrender only to Hashem, no, to no one else. Okay. So what happens? Mordechai has no doubts. What is the ultimate is when you have no doubts. When you have no doubts, you're making a house for Hashem. You're making a dira for God. The moment you have a doubt, it's like having a yo-yo. Hashem, yes. Right? Hashem, no. Hashem, maybe. Oh, certainly maybe. It's a certain, it's a certain maybe. So Hashem says, no problem, I'm there. But you're not aligning yourself because you have doubts. And I cannot dwell in a place where there's doubts. Interestingly enough, in the Mishnah of Megillah, it says that because of particular situations, we can read the Megillah on the 11th of the month, on the 12th of the month, the 13th, the 14th, or the 15th, depending if you live in a village, etc., etc. And it says, Lo pachot velo yoter, not less than the 11th, not more than, and, and not more than the 15th. Which means these are the limited dates where you can leave, you can read the Megillah. The Rebbe explains something incredible. Like everything the Rebbe explains. If you look at the word Amalek, in the word Amalek you have the word Malek. What's Malek? Melika. What's Melika? In the temple there was a service. It's a command of God. We don't understand why. Let's not try to understand. Where a person had to break the neck of a bird. What is the concept of breaking the neck of the bird? You have a head. You have a heart. You break the neck. You break the connection where the clarity of the mind and the feeling of the heart are suddenly broken away from one another. The Rebbe says, this is Amalek. Amalek is there to take your intellect and say, no, no, no. It's not connected to reality. Not having doubts is actually aligning both of them. And therefore, we understand. The way it says, the way the name of Hashem is made, is Yud and He and Vav and He. So you have the Yud, which is 10. You have the He, which is 5. You have the Vav, which is 6. And you have the He, which is 5. This is the intellect. And this is the emotions. And the expression of the emotions. What happens when you have a doubt? There's a separation. There's a break between of them. Just like Amalek. So what do we need to do? We need to take the break away, reconnect God's name together. 10 and 5, 15. 6 and 5, 11. The Megillah is read from the 11th to the 15th. And not before and not after. We need to reconnect Hashem's name. We need to have that clarity to reveal the hiddenness, to be like Mordechai, a good, pleasant odor. Now we understand. What is the ultimate? What is the letter par excellence which represents the unity of Hashem? The letter Aleph. Yud Vav Yud Yud 10 Yud 10 Vav 6 Oh, that's 26 and this is 1. Hashem Echad the unity of above, the wisdom of above, the wisdom of below are connected through Torah. There's a perfect unity. The letter Aleph in Hebrew, when you spell it, is a very interesting letter as well. Aleph, 1. Lamed, 30. Pe, 80. How much is that? 111. 111, which represents the three letters of Kuf, Yud, Aleph, which is Kutsha Berichu, God, Yud, Israel, Aleph, Oraita, the Torah. Perfect unity. Wow. 
And that's why the Torah starts with the letter Aleph. Ah, didn't we say in Bereshit that why does the Torah start with a Bet, not with an Aleph? Because Aleph, Arur, it's cursed. Bet, Beracha, blessing. What are you talking about? The Torah starts with the Aleph. And what, what is the Torah? Well, it depends what you're talking about. When you're talking about God, Aleph is the true blessing. There's only one God. But when you talk about flus, money, success, material success, you need to double the Aleph. So let's just do that. Let's double that Aleph. Let's double the Aleph. It becomes a bet. Sorry. becomes a bet. Let's double that uh, one, 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 one. So one becomes two. Then instead of one, 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 we have 20, right? Which is half. And we have 200, which is resh, which is bracha, blessing. Because when you double the aleph, you have blessing. That's why the Torah starts with a bet. So you need to have the Aleph. Aleph which represents the unity of Hashem. And besides that, just like in English, you know, Aluf, right? Oops, we need stability. Oh, that's another one. Thank you, thank you. Chazaku Baruch, that was a good one, Hashem. Right, I didn't think of that one. Masechet Shabbat, page 104. Over there in Masechet Shabbat, page 104, it says that there's a difference between Aleph, Mem, and Tav, and the word Sheker, Aleph, Kuf, Resh. Aleph has two solid legs, Mem has a solid, this is solid, this is not solid, this is not solid, this is not solid. This means truth, and this means Sheker. The truth, the Aleph is the beginning, the taf is the last letter and the mem is in the middle because to find truth you really have to look. Sheker, shinku, fresh are letters that succeed one another. that are one after the other. So, that's just foundation. So the letter Aleph, which is the beginning and the end of truth, Aluf represents Alufo Shalolam, the master of the universe. What do we want to do for the master of the universe? We want to make a space that we make a home for the master of the universe. What's special about the home? A home is not work where you have to dress and look nice. A home is not the sports arena where you can go in shorts. A home is not somewhere you need titles. A home is where your essence lives. God desired to have a home down here. He wants we should have stability and certainty that Hashem is here. And therefore He wants us to make a dira for Hashem. A house. How do we make a dira for Hashem? That Hashem should dwell, dar. We bring Hashem, alufo shel olam, the master of the universe, into the dimension of the Dalet, which is the unity of Hashem, and even in the dimension of this world, which is the circle reality of the other realm, which is Resh. And Mishen Yichnas Adar, Marbim Besimha. When you have the Aleph, which lives down here in this reality, then you have no more doubts. You only have joy, because you know, okay, what is happening is the reality of my eyes, you see. But then there's the reality of Hashem. That is the reality of the Aleph. Aleph, which is one. Alufo shel olam. Vakaton ye la Aleph. It says, and the small one will become Aleph, will become a thousand. The Aleph means at the same time when you spell it out, a thousand. Which means you start small, a little ounce of truth, and at that moment, you have peace of mind. This comes from Hashem, I welcome it. I am a house, I am a dwelling place for the essence of Hashem. I might not understand, I might not feel, but Hashem dwells in me. 
When I understand this, then wherever I go, the mazal accompanies me. I am everywhere I go, the mazal accompanies me, and I'm able to feel that connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That is how you really open your mazal. It starts with Simcha. To conclude with a word of Simcha, the Ari HaKadosh says that, first of all, we know that all the curses, 98 curses that are mentioned in Parashat Kitavo, come before because you did not serve Hashem with joy. You serve Hashem with joy, at that moment, you draw the blessings to you. Says Yerai HaKadosh, Be Simcha, Be Simcha, is the same letters as the word ma sha va It starts here. To conclude, <laughs> that was the lack of stability. You don't have the Aleph. So, to conclude, a story that's certainly one of my favorite stories. A Hasid of Bora Park came to see the Rebbe. He didn't have kids for 10 years. He asks the Rebbe, Rebbe, give me a bracha for kids. The Rebbe gives him a bracha. A few days later, he gets a letter in the mail. I'm sorry, but my blessing cannot dwell in a place of sadness and depression. Basically, sadness, depression, doubt. Therefore, I advise you to adopt a child. This will bring joy in your house. And this will open the channels of bracha, of blessing. He says he adopted a child. The joy came to the house. Afterwards, his wife gave birth to nine kids. We come into the month of Adar, we have to increase in joy. Another reason for this, I have my own personal interpretation based on something the Rebbe said about Simcha Torah. When do we really start the year? We don't start the year Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah, we have Yom Kippur, we have Sukkot, we have Simchat Torah. It's after Simchat Torah we really start going into our year. The Rebbe says, why Simchat Torah is the last holiday? Because the only thing that's going to be able to schlep and pull these blessings and cause that there should be a tsunami of blessings throughout the whole year, it should overflow the whole year, is only joy, because joy has the power to break boundaries. Even social boundaries, when somebody that is usually standoffish suddenly has the joy of his child, he's happy with everybody, he's connected to everyone. So the same thing, the simcha of simcha Torah has the power to draw the blessings and make it break through the year. Rosh Chodesh Nisan in a month from now is the beginning of the new Jewish year according to Torah. It's the first month. How are we going to take and start, take whatever we have from the past year to the new year? Besimcha, with joy. May Hashem bless us with true joy and when we experience miracles and the ultimate joy to see the revelation of the Aleph, Alufo Shilulam, the master of the universe, in every single one of us and in our Bet Amigdash, in our temple, with the revelation of Mashiach, which is the same letters as the word Sameach. God bless you.